In this lesson, we'll be looking at textures and texture effects. I'll only be covering full nodes. In a future lesson, we'll get to node boxes and meshes and how to texture them. Up until now, all of our nodes have used just one texture. But we have more options than that. Many nodes have different textures on their faces, such as tree trunks and furnaces. MindTest gives us control over every face of a node, and there are several stages of customization that we have. When creating a node with different textures on the faces, you'll want to set Param Type 2 as Face Dirt. We'll look at other options of Param Type 2 in the future, but for the time being, setting this will make the node rotate to place in the direction the player is looking. Skipping this step will result in the node always facing the same direction. The textures are defined in the Tiles table. As we've already seen, if we define one tile, each face will show the same texture. The draw order of the textures in the tables is as follows. Top, bottom, right, left, front, back. If you want all the sides to be the same texture, you can just define three tiles. The left, front, and back faces will all use the right faces texture. If you define any less than six tiles, the tiles you didn't define will use the last texture listed. Let's create a new node that uses six different textures. Feel free to use the textures I provide in the resource pack or create your own. For the ease of typing, I just used 1 through 6 as my file names, but of course you can use anything you'd like. It would be a good idea to prefix the names with the mod's name to make sure they don't accidentally get used in any other mod. Placing our newly created node in the world, we see that it has different textures on each face. And furthermore, we can place it while facing all four directions, and we always have the backside facing towards us. This covers how to use different textures for all the faces of a node. But there is more to discuss about textures, texture modifiers. These let us change textures in code and often allow for us to create an easier, better experience when updating textures or texture packs. The most commonly used effect is texture overlaying, which is done with a carrot. We'll start by putting an overlay on one of our basic nodes. All we have to do is add a carrot after the base texture and add the overlay texture file name after that. To start, we'll simply add an overlay to our fake diamond. Heart PNG is the texture used for the health status bar, so we'll use that and overlay it over the diamond block texture, like so. Starting the game, we can play some of those blocks and we'll see that the heart is drawn over the diamond block texture on all sides. What if the overlay should only be on a single face though? That's simple to do. Let's go ahead and add the heart image to the top of our first node. Just like previously, we'll add the carrot's heart after the first tile. Launching the game, we can see that the heart is only drawn on the top of the first node. Of course, if one wanted, they could do an overlay on each face, or do different overlays on each face. It's completely open to your desires. The benefit in using overlays is that if you ever want to change a texture, you only have to change one. It also makes it easier for people making texture packs. The stone with ores is a good example. MindTest game has a handful of ores, and they're all an overlay texture over the default stone texture. If somebody wanted to change what the stone looks like, they only need to change one texture, rather than having to try and change the stone parts of all of the ore textures. There is much more we can do, and if we want, we can even put multiple modifiers together on one face, though it will likely be necessary to enclose portions of the modifiers within parentheses to achieve the results we want. All modifiers, with the exception of overlays and groups, use an opening square brace and a modifier name and a set of variables to define what should be done to the texture. We still need to use the carrot before the square brace though, or we'll get an error about the texture not existing. The heart image is looking a little dark in my opinion, but only on the first note, so let's change that. We can use the brighten modifier, which will make the colors of the pixels brighter. We only want to brighten the heart though. The base texture is perfect, and we don't want to make that brighter. We'll use a group for the heart image and its modifier, and then overlay that over the base texture. The Brighten modifier does not take any additional arguments, and brightens to a predefined level. Launching the game, we'll see that our hearts on the first note are looking a little pink now, but the heart on the diamond block still looks normal. The modifiers only affect the node and tile that they are used on, so we can use a base texture and do different things with it on multiple nodes, saving ourselves some file space and time. I don't really care for how the heart looks though. I wanted the dark reds to be a little lighter, but I didn't want it to turn pink. Let's change the Brighten to Colorize. The Colorize modifier takes two variables, a color string and a numerical value. 
We can either use a variety of RGB formats or use any HTML color name. So rather than launching an image editor to see what the RGB value is for red, we can just use the word red. We can change the numerical value to represent how much red we want to add. Setting the value to 255 will result in a solid red heart. This doesn't affect the alpha though. We can use this to completely change the color of the heart if we'd like by simply changing the color. In the upper example, you can see how the colorize effect works on a grayscale gradient. The last image in each row uses the multiply modifier. This takes a color value, but no numerical value. Multiplying works well for coloring grayscale images, making the color vary in brightness dependent on the grayscale image. You can adjust the brightness of the color that you are multiplying to achieve different shades in your final texture. To demo how to use different modifiers on base images and their overlays, let's do one more change to our node. Well, three actually. Let's change the green back to red and add a transform to both images. Notice how both images are isolated between parentheses and the modifiers are strung together with carrots. There are many more things we can do, such as rotating and flipping images, turning specific colors to alpha, removing alpha, and copying a vertical portion of one image onto another. Of course, we can combine these modifiers as well. I could go for hours and hours covering all the different things we can do, but that would get boring. So I'll just let you explore and fool around with different modifiers. You can find an entire list with short descriptions of what they do and how to use them in the Lua API. Let's take a look at animated textures next. You've probably noticed that a few textures in my test are animated. Water, most specifically. But the fronts of furnaces also have an animated texture when something is being cooked. Mine test lets you use vertical frames or tile sheets. When using vertical frames, you need to define how wide and tall each individual frame is in the image, and it will automatically detect how many individual frames there are. Using a sheet, you need to define how many frames wide and tall the sheet is. Using animated textures requires quite a bit more code in the node registration, but it's really not that difficult. Like a static image, we need to define the texture name. I'm using the furnace animation because I didn't want to create my own animation. Following the name, we have a table with animation data. This image is in the vertical frame layout, so we have how wide and high in pixels each frame should be. When using the vertical frames type, you specify the entire loop's length in seconds. But when using a sheet, you define each frame's length in seconds. We can have a single animated face on a node with the rest of the faces being static. We do this just like a multiple textured node and place the entire table with the name and animation in the correct location. Global textures are a neat way to add a little variance to textures without creating multiple nodes. Nodes with this option will pull a texture from a larger sheet depending on where they are placed in the world. To start, we need an image that has a number of tiles that can evenly divide to 16. We define a single texture, an align style of world, and a scale. The scale is the number of nodes the texture will span. The inventory image will show the entire texture by default, but you can easily create an inventory image with the inventory cube modifier. You'll need to define three faces and can easily pull them from the tile sheet using the sheet modifier and the scale value. This example uses a horrible texture, but does make the feature very noticeable. Before I wrap this up, I think it's important to talk a little bit about file formats and resolutions. MindTest will read many image formats, but PNG is the most widely used and what I recommend, if for no other reason than its lossless nature, which lets you edit and save the image as many times as you want without the textures ever becoming muddied and blurry. MindTest game uses textures that are 16 pixels wide and tall, but there are texture packs and other resolutions. 32 by 32 is fairly common, and there is even a 512 by 512 texture pack. Of course, at a high resolution like that, you'll need a decent system to run the game smoothly. The important thing to keep in mind when working on your textures is that the resolution should always be evenly divisible by 2, and you should probably keep all your textures the same resolution, to avoid having nodes that look out of place because they're a different resolution. Here's a challenge to try out what you've learned. Create a new node with a different texture for each face. Use an overlay on one face, an animated face, a colorized modifier on a face, and lastly, a face that uses one modifier on the base image and another modifier on an overlay image. The remaining faces, feel free to do what you'd like on.
Thanks for watching this lesson. I trust you learned something you can use to make your very own mods. If you enjoyed what you saw and learned something, consider subscribing and making a donation. You'll find all the resources for this lesson on my website, linked in the description below.